Sarah? Where the hell does she get to? All right. James Hadley, I'll be damned. Come in. Brian, what on earth are you doing? They tell me you'll be flat on your back, covered in bandages from head to toe, not galloping about. Really, James? It's wonderful to see you. Let me get you a drink. No, no, no. Now, you just sit down, will you? I'll do the running about. All right? Yeah. Can you take the sticks? Yes, come on. Thanks. So, two blows laid up? No one. I didn't even hear about the accident. Oh. They just told me that you come out of hospital last week. I see. Well, you're going to tell me about it, are you? Well, it's very short and bitter, I'm afraid. Yeah? No, thank you. One of those Formula One meetings up at Colwell. I was just lapping a new boy and the damn fool swung left, hit me on the near side. There's nothing I could do. We both went tumbling off circuit. I got my legs twisted under the wheel, broke a couple of bones. Other car caught fire. Driver? Burns, that sort of thing. What, bad? And which makes it safer for everyone else. So you were lucky? Well, I suppose so, if you call this luck. Well, you'll be walking about soon. I mean, you're going to drive again. Oh, yes, a month or so. It's just a matter of getting the leg muscles back to strength. <laughs> I've got my eye on the Buenos Aires meeting in July. Won my first big race on that circuit. Well, what about you? Must be three or four years. Mm, that's right. Just after... Just after Laura walked out? Yes. I married again. Mm, so I hear. Sarah's a bit of a highbrow, music, art, all that nonsense. What the hell does she see in you? The virile savage. They can't resist it. She doesn't like motor racing, but I make her go whenever I can. Why? Well, I think it does her good. Keeps her away from all those weirdos that hang around the art galleries. Oh, I don't mean Sarah herself. It's her job. She writes for a funny weekly. Which one? New Criticism. Mm, what does she write? Music notices. Opera, mainly. It's not quite your ambiance, is it? Not quite, Jane. How about you, still pushing through the big deals? Well, I've got one on at the moment that could be quite big if I pull it off. Might interest you, as a matter of fact. Well, what is it? It's to do with car engines. It's a new gadget for fuel injection. I can't tell you about it now, but these two lads came to me and we formed a company to market it. Not much interest here, but we have had a very strong inquiry from Germany. I'm going over towards the end of the week. Trust them. They don't miss a thing car-wise. They're not bad at music, either. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I didn't know. At last. James Sarah. Sarah, James Hatley, a very old friend of mine. Oh, I think I know your name. Brian must have mentioned it. I was just saying, I hoped I'd be able to meet you. Where have you been? Brian says you write for new criticism. Oh, whatever made him mention that? James wanted to know. Do you like music? Uh, some. Mozart, Verdi, that sort of thing. Try him on Wagner. She's a great one for these shouting Germans. I can't imagine why. Well, perhaps we're missing something. Oh, not necessarily. <laughs> we can't all like everything. For instance, you and motor racing. Quite. Still, you have had a rest from it recently. Well, not the way I wanted it, but yes. She's off again tonight, James. Some howling match at Covent Garden. Really? Uh, what are you going to hear? The dreaded Wagner, I'm afraid. Will you enjoy that? Yes, I hope so. It's a new production of Valkyrie. Uh-huh. Do you know, James, this terrible, hairy old man, Wotan, spends an hour on stage bawling out his daughter. Then when she won't do as she's told, he surrounds her with a damn great ring of fire. And they call that entertainment. Well, in your own field of entertainment, you weren't very far from a ring of fire yourself not long ago, were you? <laughs> well, that was the real thing, James. Yes, particularly for the other driver. Can we change the subject? Why not? Who's going with you tonight, then? No one. Why don't you invite James? He might enjoy meeting the beast at first hand. <laughs> Would you like to come? I can't promise you'll enjoy yourself. To say the least. Pay no attention. He's a complete Philistine. Well, I'm not much of a Wagner fan myself, but uh, yes, I'd like to come. Thank you very much. Oh, good. I'm glad. Be sure to have something strong beforehand, James. You've got a long, long night ahead of you. Mm. Well, I am looking forward to it.
No, not at all. It's a bit overwhelming, isn't it? I mean, the huge sound of that huge tree in the middle of the stage, those long, lingering looks. And then just when you're suffocating, he does something absolutely beautiful. This is the most beautiful of them all. Wagner was terribly sentimental about young lovers, particularly when they were lost and hopeless. Well, those two come to a sticky end, don't they? They're far too exalted to survive, and that hunding looks a thoroughly bad lot. I saw a wonderful illustration of Hunding once, glaring across the table at his wife and the stranger eyeing each other. If I'd been Siglind, I'd have run a mile. You don't strike me as the nervous sort. That's because there aren't any Hundings about. Are you sure? Well, perhaps I should say I'm not married to one. No, no, perhaps not. I don't think Hunding would let his wife go out with a total stranger, do you? I thought Brown was an old friend. Yes, I meant you, not him. Besides, I, I haven't seen Brown for a very long time. How long have you known him? Oh, a good few years. We were very close once. Oh, he used to be a wild man. Almost heroic, in a way. He used to be. You can't be very wild in a wheelchair. Has he changed? Why do you ask? I've only known him for three years, but I think he's changed. Mm -hmm. You can't go on risking your life at 200 miles an hour without changing a bit. No, I suppose not. What about you? Well, well, you travel a bit, do you? I mean, festivals and that sort of thing? Oh, yes. Well, that's one of the reasons I like the job. It, lets, it gets me away. Well, I, I see places, I meet people. If it wasn't for Wagner, I wouldn't be sitting here with you now, would I? When's your next trip? By right, Monday. I've managed to get into some of the rehearsals. It's almost unheard of. How far is that from Nuremberg? Oh, it's not far, but... 50 miles on the autobahn. I shall be there for a while. On oh, Nuremberg? Mm -hmm. When? I leave on Saturday. I shall be there for the whole of the following week. <laughs> well, I was just thinking, I suppose you'll be frightfully busy all the time. Some of the time, not all the time. What about you? Oh, certainly not all the time. Well, if we had an evening off, would you be free for dinner? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, of course. This is my Knightsbridge flat. Let me have your phone number in Bayreuth. We might have the same evening offer. Yes, son. I'll let you know the number. Thanks. You should go at it more slowly, darling. Don't try and rush. You sound as though you care. I care very much. It must be very confusing for you. Will you ring me from Germany? I always do. I'll ring you too. Oh, I've, um, I've got to go out one or two evenings seeing people. I'll leave it till late. Yeah, all right. Look, when you get back, I'll be almost normal. We can go with... It's, it's a taxi. That's all right, he'll wait. 
I was saying something. Yes, I'm sorry. When you get back, we can go away somewhere, out of town. Have some fresh air and exercise. It'll make a change for both of us. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Well, relax, darling. You're not going to a first night. Look after yourself. I'll try. I'm sorry, Mr. Hadley. I'm afraid it didn't go quite as planned. I feel as I've been talking for a week. Wade Automatics. All I needed was the damned Americans, wasn't it? Well, I think everyone has been very impressed. By what? Well, the figures? The drawings? They certainly weren't impressed by my arguments. No, 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 no. I think you're wrong. You must understand that we are talking about a very good but very unusual innovation. In this sort of situation, it is not in the German character to say yes or no after just a few meetings. I have been here for four days. You okay. must expect this. Our motor industry has been developed slowly and carefully. But you'll find that once we make up our minds, we work fast. This development of yours is a very remarkable piece of work, but we've got to be thorough. And we've got to look at every other opportunity. Well, I didn't know that Wade Automatics were working on a similar process now, did I? Fundamentally, they are not as good as yours, but they are cheaper to manufacture and simpler to maintain, and that's why they've got the pool. And they'll be here on Sunday. Dozens of them. Yes. Well, it doesn't give us very much time, does it? To do what? To improve the product. To... But how? By making it cheaper to manufacture and simpler to maintain. But there are only four days before the Americans arrive. How can you change your product in four days? Well, I don't know. I'm not an engineer, am I? But my partners are, and I've got a great deal of faith in them. Do I understand you, Mr. Hadley? As well as having more sophisticated product, you're going to try and match your competitors on cost? Why not? But that sort of thing can take months. No, no, no. <laughs> I can meet my partners in London this afternoon. They can start work on it straight away. They won't be finished by the time the Americans get here, but they won't be far behind. And this time, I'm going to bring the brains with me. You amaze me. Look, it's a good product, isn't it? I mean, you're going to buy it if your accountants agree with your engineers, right? Yeah. Right. Well, I wonder if you're... Uh... If your secretary could get me on a flight to London this afternoon. Of course, I'll see to it at once. Oh, and uh, I'd quite like to make a private call to Bayreuth. Certainly. Hello? James? Well, it's not your fault. Yes, I was going to, but... I might as well go back myself. I've seen everything. There's no point in hanging on. Yes, yes, I'll be in touch. If you really want me to. because you won't have a minute to yourself when the Americans get there. Mm. Well, now, don't you let them hustle you, will you? No, we had a very good three days. Mm. We're working on the new prototype now, and I'll tell you this. You'll be able to fit it to your new 1650 engine in less than half an hour. Now, I can't say exactly when. Probably within the week. Mm. Yes, sure. As soon as I get the word, I'll be right over. We'll all be over. No. Now, I'll cable you first. Yes, sure. Goodbye.
Hello? Oh, James, I'm so glad you rang. I hope you didn't mind me leaving that message. No. No, he goes to the physiotherapist every afternoon. Well, I'm still regretting last Wednesday. No. I wouldn't have made the arrangement if I'd thought that. Well, it's nice of you to say so. Well, there's always London to fall back on, isn't there? I'm inviting you to dinner, sir. No, you'll have to say when. Tomorrow, yes, that's fine for me. And for me? Are you quite sure you won't have a brandy? Not quite sure. Oh, I think. Now, I wonder what I could do to cheer you up. I was thinking I was miles away. Yes, three miles to be precise, as the crow flies. Are you sorry we did this? It was my idea. I'm sorry, I've not been very entertaining. Mm -hmm. You weren't hired as an entertainer. I can do it quite well sometimes. Why don't you just talk and I'll listen? Anything you like. Hmm? I'd bore you to death. No, I don't think so. Not you, Sarah. Yeah, I didn't explain about Nuremberg, did okay, I? See, everything was going absolutely splendidly, and then suddenly, after three days, right out of the blue, I found there were some Americans after exactly the same contract. I had no idea. You don't have to. No, I know. I just hate cancelling things at the last moment. I don't like it when people do it to me. Well, I shouldn't think it happens to you very often, does it? <laughs> Nor to you. Do you know, James? Since I've been married, I've never been taken to dinner like this. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Does it does it worry you? It did to start with. I didn't realise how secure I was in my virtue. Well, you're not being particularly unvirtuous, are you? No. But it's so reassuring always being in the right. Morally. Yes. Even when it makes you unhappy? The holier-than-thou feeling compensates. Up to a point. But it does have its limitations. It doesn't do to look over the wall, because then you see things you shouldn't see. Unworthy things? No, that's the point. Good things. Real things. My things. You're quite sure they're not a mirror, are you? No, I'm not sure. That's one of the things one has to find out. How important is it to you? Well, finding out. Mm -hmm. Very important. And frightening. <sighs> I should have had that brandy. You want it now? What, here? No, I happen to know the whereabouts of a very excellent old cognac. <laughs> now, let me guess. Knightsbridge? Under your pillow? No, behind the bookcase. But you're on the right line. Well, it's not exactly Hunding's house in the forest, but we are on a bus route. Would you like a bed? Sure, this is terribly old. You haven't got me here under false pretense. No pretenses, false or otherwise. Music. <laughs> that's the bathroom, and that's the kitchen.
Now I feel like Bluebeard's last wife. Curiosity got the better of her, too. Well, explore as much as you like. It won't take you long. I think I've finished exploring. He really was mad to throw me at you. Mm -hmm. Insane. I mean, what can he expect? How old did you say this brandy was? I didn't. Now, if this had been by Royd, or the moon. But it isn't. Mm -hmm. Does it matter? Not at all. strange in other people's bedrooms. Out of practice. I've been trying to remember who asked who. I think I asked you. But you're not sure? Yes, yes, I'm sure. And I accepted? Yes. But I didn't give you very much time, did I? I must be such a fool. No, I don't think so. I'll take you home. No. No, I'll cover myself up. I'll walk till I get a taxi. That's what I want to do. Walk. Buenas senora. Why are you all dressed up? Well, I don't usually wear a T-shirt in the evening when people come round. Not this evening. Just Hadley. Any objections? No. Why did you ask him round? You'll see. Have you noticed? What? You must try and be more attentive. Oh, what have I missed? The walk. Oh, that's... that's terrific. You'd never know, would you? I'd just take that for granted. Never do that. No, of course not. All right, answer. Hello, James. Hello, Sarah. Hello. How's the infirm? Getting firmer every day. Nice to see you, James. Scotch. Oh, please, yes. Making plans, are you? Well, it won't be long now. You know, James, racing circuits are a bit like women. There are no two exactly alike. But the same basic rules apply. Mm -hmm. Goes for most things, doesn't it? How was the immolation? Brunhilde on the bonfire. Ah, uh, sensational. Makes everything else look like punch and duty. Thank you. I say, that's better, isn't it? You're walking beautifully. Someone noticed. We were thinking of going away somewhere for a few days. That sounds a good idea. Well, apparently I need the exercise, walking, riding, that sort of Where thing. Where are you going? Well, that's the problem. I don't know. Maybe the West Country's good for that sort of thing, or Scotland. What's Yorkshire like in the summer? Mm. Absolutely be 
beautiful. Well, I quite like the idea of the West Country. Oh, Yorkshire's bigger and wilder, and it gets very crowded at this time of year in the southwest. People come to Yorkshire too, you know. Oh, not all over, surely. We could do a trip north. Would you like that? Perhaps we could call on you, James. Yes. You sure you wouldn't mind? No, not at all. Of course, I shan't be at Melford all the time, of course. Are the Germans still after you? Yes, I'm going up there tomorrow, and then I shall be going over to Nuremberg later in the week. Well, look here. If it's not inconvenient for you, we could start our tour at Melford and go on from there. Yes, I suppose you could. Would you like that? <laughs> well, we haven't given James much choice. Not at all. I should have thought of it myself. We'll be able to see James in his own environment. That must be a noble sight. <laughs> you make me sound like a buffalo in a national park. Oh, much more interesting than that, I'm sure. I'll get one of the little perishers in a minute. I stay him lower if I were you. You're going over the top. How are your leg muscles? Perfectly all right. Should we make our way back? You don't overdo it the first time, do you? I'm absolutely fine. Well, you'll feel it later on. I'm not going till I hit something. We can try later on this evening. I really wouldn't bother, Brian. Don't forget to unload. Where's Bra? He's gone up to his room. You managed to murder anything? No, not much. Is that coffee? Mm. You're getting bored, are you? Came here for Brian's sake. And nobody else's. Well, I suppose James told you I missed everything I aimed at. No. He, of course, didn't miss anything. Still, I suppose it's one way of getting fit. What have you been doing? I went for a walk. Why don't you come with us later? No, I'd rather not. Excuse me, Mr. James. Yeah? A call from London. Ah, uh, yes, all right, I'll take it outside. Excuse me, would you? Sure. You're not exactly chucking yourself into this, are you? I don't like guns. No, of course you wouldn't. Do you want some coffee? No. Why don't you try harder at being the loving wife? Does that mean I have to go shooting? Well, why not? Other women do. <coughs> All right. Shooting at things makes you happy. And the exercise makes you fit so that you can get back to motor racing that much sooner. Well, that's me, isn't it? With me helping you. That's the way it is. That was a call from my partner. Oh, good, good news? Yes, yes, they've finished the new prototype two days early. Oh, that means you'll be going back to Nuremberg. Well, I did say I'd go as soon as it was ready, yes. I'm sorry about this. You mustn't let it upset your plans. You must do just to stay on as long as you like. I know you've got it in for those rabbits. It is becoming a bit of an issue. Well, please, do whatever you want. How long will you be away? I don't know. Probably some time. Well, I got one in the end. Without the help of Jesse James Hadley. 
tell Mrs. Maxwell I thought she did the rabbit beautifully. Oh, thank, thank you, sir. I'll tell her. I could get to like shooting. I could get to like it all. How about you? I'm going out with the estate manager tomorrow. Wonderful character. Marvellous shot, better than James. Why don't you come? You get used to the noise after a while. I'm going back to London. When? Tomorrow morning. But why? I thought we were going to have some time off together. I've got to see some people. But, Sarah... But you don't really need me. You've got all this and the estate manager. I'm not really part of it, am I? But we agreed. Are you saying that I mustn't go? That's not the point. Well, what about me? Are you insisting that I stay? Oh, all right. If other people are more important, go. Why wait for tomorrow? There must be a train tonight. I'm going in the morning. So, now all that remains is the congratulations. <laughs> and I think we both deserve a drink. That looks a very superior, Scott. What else should it be? To seal an Anglo-German contract? Oh, thank God there are no Scotsmen here. Yes, I know, we've got those problems too. Only in our case, the division is forced upon us. That puts it in perspective, doesn't it? Thank you. To you, James, to our contract and to International Corporation. And to you. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> oh, I know. God. It was a struggle, huh? <laughs> yes. yes, I think I should just go back to the King Frederick, have a long hot bath, and think about nothing at all. You're lucky Dr. Winkler couldn't give his reception tonight. <laughs> Otherwise, you would have been eating and drinking till three o'clock in the morning. He really enjoys entertaining. <laughs> yes. He's of the old school. He enjoys exhausting his guests. But tomorrow I'll be ready for him. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Yeah? Pinnet? Yeah, in a moment. It's for you, James. I think the news must have leaked out. Yes, James Hadley. Hello. Well, where are you ringing from? Well, yesterday. No, 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 we just finished. Well, yes, of course. Wait a minute, I'll just write down the address. Thank you. Yes, I got that. Now, I'll get a cab. Yeah? All right. I'll see you about seven. No. Nope. Goodbye. Not a press, I assume. Well, as a matter of fact, it was, yes. But not an industrial correspondent. <laughs> James, how gorgeous. Yes, I thought so too. Just let me put them in water. Expecting that phone call. I hope it wasn't thought improper. No, 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 no. It was a toss-up between you and Herr Dr. Winkler. But fortunately he was busy. Who's Dr. Winkler? Oh, Herr Director. He gives long, memorable dinner parties. So do I sometimes. Yes, I'll believe that. Does Brian know? He's either in Melford or London, I don't know. You left him in Melford? Yes. Well, there won't be a rabbit left in the West Riding, will there? Do you want to talk about him, James? Not if you don't want to, no. Just this once. All right. <sighs> 
So the deal went through. Yes, there was a lot of talking, but it's all signed and sealed. Well, you must be very pleased with yourself. Yes, I am. All I want now is dinner with a very attractive girl. I hope I didn't call at the wrong time. No, no, no. I thought you might be in conference or something. The last thing you want would be some woman chattering. No, I was just having a drink with the director. So it was all right. It was a great deal more than that. I've put Samoiselle on ice. I love it at this time of the evening. Or would you like something else? No. Yeah. Sounds ideal. Is this your flat? No. Haven't I told you about my friend Sophie? Very rich. Very unattached. And very cultured. <laughs> well, they all are, James. What, do you mean the rich or the unattached? Or do you mean the Germans? Well, I certainly don't mean the rich. You're rather fond of the Germans, aren't you? Not particularly. They take themselves seriously. And we don't, you mean? Oh, some things we do. We're good at killing... killing animals. Oh, they're not so bad at that themselves, you know. I bet they've got a Valhalla for rabbits. There's no Valhalla for anybody. Courage ends here. Does Brian know you're in Nuremberg? I don't know. He could guess. Yes, yes, he could. He's been here once or twice. He knows Sophie lets me use the flat. Oh, you and he are a very odd couple. We're just married to each other. Well, it must have been more than that once. The attraction of opposites. It can work. Oh, yes, yes, it can. You and me. Mm. Well, we're not much alike, but at least we're polite to each other. Could we go on being polite year after year? Why not? Oh, you make it sound so formal, like Jane Austen. I think people can be formal and wild, polite and passionate. It's a good manners that keeps up the interest. And covers up the unhappiness? Does there have to be very much of that? Well, it happens. This, for instance. I shouldn't be here. It has to be accounted for. Just being together. I expect you're hungry. Well, I hope you like old-fashioned German cooking. <laughs> you're feeling wealthy, James. Wealthy. You're talking about settling accounts. You're rich enough for both of us. This could cost a lot of courage. You really meant what you said, didn't you? About taking things seriously. And I thought we were just going to have dinner. Teams of tame geniuses. And all they had to say was, uh, we've got somebody coming in to dinner tonight. Just run us up a little five-act masterpiece. <laughs> they were all very cultivated. Not at all. How can you listen to music when you're peeling oranges or cracking nuts? They liked that sort of thing. No, it was their idea of television. Well, it's not now. Ah, oh, but there are different factors now. Mm. Such as what? Grand opera? I mean, really grand opera? Look, take Aida, for instance. Pharaoh's army. Oh, no, that's not No, fair. you can't take that seriously. Well, some things you can. I can take that seriously. The Valkyrie. In case you ever want to be reminded of Covent Garden. I shall. Thank you, Sarah. It's not a new recording, but I like that performance best. Well, I suppose in future I shall have to be careful where I go, what I see. Careful? I was thinking of the people one meets. I suppose so. Perhaps if I just avoid first night. Well, there's not much danger of meeting by accident. I don't think that really happens. 
Even if it did? It wouldn't be the end of the world. I'm glad we're being reasonable. It makes everything so much easier. I'm sorry. No. Don't say that. This just wasn't meant to be an affair. And it hasn't been. They've just taken advantage of circumstances, and now they're over. Yes, I think so. It'd be silly to think it was any different. And now? I'll go. Yes. I had the picture in my mind. The table, the candle. The long eye to eye looks. And the music. Always the bloody music! I didn't quite believe it. These things don't happen, not with nice people. I thought I'd find nothing. Just be making a fool of myself. But there was a little jab of instinct, and I've always trusted my instinct. And what did it tell you? That you'd be here with Sarah. Oh, I didn't get it the first time. When Sarah came back from her first little jaunt with you, I thought it was the opera she'd enjoyed, but I got it the second. The dinner party. She said it was friends. But she didn't sleep very well that night. Is that why you... Yes. That's why I asked you round. Why I invited myself to Melford. I thought I was being made a fool of, and I didn't care for that. I had to know. Hell, I couldn't have you and Sarah running around behind my back. There were too many opportunities, like all this. Opportunities for what? For making a fool out of me. I don't really think you got together just to talk about Tristan and his soul. No one's that dedicated. Not Sarah, and certainly not you. So you found us having dinner together. Now, I do hope you're pleased with yourself. Is that all I found? Is that all? I think I'll just have a look. Where's your case? I didn't bring a case. Of course not. You were just on your way home. Yes, I right? was. If you'd come a minute later, I wouldn't be here. For God's sake, Hadley, I'm not stupid. You came here tonight for one reason, and I'm going to prove it. Where's your damn case? It's in my hotel. You're lying. All right, then. Let's just go back together and have a look, shall we? I see. So you didn't bring a case. After all, it's not important, is it? It's not vital. I think that's enough. Oh, you do? You think that's enough? Now just shut up, will you? You think I'm having an affair with Sarah and you think this proves it? Well, I'm not. Now get that straight for a start. We've had dinner together twice. Now, apart from that, we, we've never been alone together and we've never had any plans to meet again. Now, if you think I was going to spend the night here, you've got another guest coming. Sarah's very attractive, and she's very good company. But I'm not in love with Sarah, nor she with me. Now, you may think it's strange that two people can just have pleasure talking, but it's never too late to learn, Brian. Just talking. And listening. And that's all. I think you'd better go. Yes, well, it was you who stopped me in the first place, wasn't it? Thank you, James. Goodbye. Yes. Goodbye, sir.
after he'd run, I wished I'd said no. I thought it would be hard seeing you. I'll go if you like. No, it doesn't matter now. I just thought you'd like to talk. If not, that's all right. That was nice of you. Do you, do you know why it happened? No. It was just a simple mechanical fault. Front suspension. Apparently Brian was full of himself before the race, no worries, completely fit, did a very good practice. Nothing on his mind. The team manager said he'd never seen him so relaxed. We didn't do it, James. He was too good a driver for that. And I'm not in mourning. I'd have gone to Argentina with him. But he didn't want me to. Things hadn't been too bad since you saw us last. Not good. Tolerable. It wasn't going to last. Another few months, then finish. Whose idea would that have been? His. Just his? Yes. yes. But it was nothing to do with you. He wanted to be loved and he couldn't believe it when he saw it. And you? I don't know. We were very different. Are you staying in this flat? No. And I'm leaving the paper. I'm going to Australia and then California. I've got an aunt in Los Angeles. What are you going to do there? Get some writing, see some opera, the usual things. When will you be back? No idea. I shan't hurry. I've still got your card. I wasn't very pleased with what I did. It doesn't help to see you. You'll get over that. I suppose so. So, don't lose the card.